Software and technology companies have unique reporting and budgeting requirements. In this demo, we'll cover a few of the templates that we see customers commonly employ. As these organizations are typically high growth, there's a lot of emphasis on the top line. So we'll cover B2B subscription waterfalls as well as uh, high volume consumer uh, platform type models. We'll also talk about headcount, hiring, and uh, OPEX. Now model and adaptive is made up of a set of sheets. In this case, um, financial statements, uh, income statement, balance sheet, cash flow, as well as a set of uh, operational schedules and drivers that cover things like sales, marketing, uh, and so on. I've opened up a, a set of these across the top that we'll tap through in a minute. But for now, let's get started on the PL. And here you can see it looks and feels much like Excel. I've got natural accounts down the left hand side and, and time across the top, but there are a couple other things going on as well. The green numbers there uh, signal that those are actuals, which have been imported from a transactional system like my ERP, uh, while the black is the forward uh, estimates going forward. There's also versioning. So um, much like a, a save as, uh, I can create copies and what ifs, which we'll do in a minute to, to do some scenario planning. Um, but uh, those are really important because I can then compare them and contrast them for a reporting perspective. There's also an org structure and higher level hierarchy. So right now we're looking at consolidated results at the top level, but we can easily dive down into any part of the business here. This is really important because it lets uh, stakeholders input uh, budget directly uh, and kind of limits the model to just their particular portions. And from here, it works very much like Excel. I can input numbers and write formulas, etc. And now getting beyond the PL, I've opened up a couple of other sheets here uh, they get down into some of the operational drivers that are, are critical. Um, and from a sort of B2C uh, side, we see lots of folks uh, doing lead generation. So these are freemium, uh, premium type models where folks have uh, lead generation and conversion rates and subscribers. And those can be filtered by, in this case, a set of channels or potentially different plans and programs. And these are often underpinned by uh, pretty complicated cohort modelings where uh, folks look at weekly, daily, monthly cohorts of, uh, of behavior and whether that's retention or renewal rates or transaction consumption uh, behavior, etc. Uh, and then uh, lastly, there's also uh, the uh, B2B uh, subscriber uh, subscription waterfall uh, models where folks look at beginning uh, balance for an ARR, ACV, as well as net new, churn, uh, so on and so forth. Okay, now that you have a little bit of feel for uh, some of the um, templates, let's uh, get into see some of them in action. So we've set up a dashboard here uh, that's gonna allow us to flex a scenario. You can see a set of charts uh, across the top, uh, as well as some sheets that we actually embedded directly on here. And what we've set up is basically our four plus uh, eight plan. And then we're gonna compare that to a what if version. So we're gonna look at new bookings, uh, as well as an OPEX reconciliation, uh, and also kind of monitor where we are from a cash perspective. Now, right now it's not very interesting because uh, we haven't made any changes yet, but let's get into it here. So we'll start here with our top line bookings um, drivers. And let's just assume there was a global pandemic in the first quarter and we need to revise guidance down for the forward years. So let's take our growth assumption down uh, and also in particular, maybe our attainment assumptions for our enterprise reps, uh, guide those down a little bit and spread those out uh, evenly for the remainder of the year. Let me save the changes here. And next, while we're at it, why don't we uh, pop over to a schedule of um, renewal rates here. And so we've got a set of cohorts that uh, are maybe coming up for renewal uh, later this summer. And, you know, we'll take those down from kind of our normal 95% range uh, down into this 85% uh, percent target area. Just a bit of conservatism. And lastly, we'll move over to the personnel sheet. Uh, and here, maybe this story is a little bit more positive. Uh, so, you know, we'll pull a few of these start dates that we had slotted for the uh, December timeframe and, and put those into sort of June. So we save all those changes and then scroll up a little bit here and we can see those um, impacts reflected on the, on the charts. So uh, in the balance of the year here, our bookings has fallen off. The green line is tailed down below the teal. Uh, we can see the impact uh, of the OPEX uh, reconciliation here. The pull forward on the hires has, has cost us a bit from a payroll perspective primarily. Uh, and lastly, we can see our cash, uh, the combination of the renewals and, and lower bookings uh, and increased uh, expense uh, is tapering off here and, and kind of plateaus at the 20 million uh, range. So, you know, we may or may not be okay with those changes, uh, but uh, that's a little taste of how scenario planning works in Adaptive. I hope that was helpful and please uh, reach out to us with any questions.